This video should help with your chapter seven and eight mastering physics assignment, which is about torques and static equilibrium. So the first question deals with a uniform beam weighing 650 Newtons at rest supported by two walls. And we need to find the forces those walls exert on the beam. So the question looks like this, there's a beam. And it's quite a heavy beam. It has a weight, so we'll call this F G beam, and that's 650 Newtons. And the two supporting walls are not evenly spaced. So there's a wall here, call this A, and then there's a wall over here, we call that B this beam is sitting on. And the distance from one end to wall A is three meters. And the distance from one, the left end to wall B is 15 meters. And the length of the wall of the beam, the whole beam is 20 meters. Which means being a uniform beam, the distance to the center of mass of the beam is half the length of the beam. So that would be 10 meters to this, uh, to the weight, I'll put it up here, 10 meters. Okay, so we have two unknowns, the force from wall A and the force from wall B. Now those forces are gonna be up. And so if I just do the beam, the free body diagram for the beam, I've got the force from wall A, which is holding it up, the force from wall B, which is helping to hold it up as well, not necessarily equal forces here. And then you've got the weight of the beam, but then you have a person on here too. The person stands here. And the person um, also has a weight of 650 Newtons and the person is standing five meters from the end of the beam. And so this distance here is five meters. Okay, so we can put the FG person here as well. And that's it. So there's two forces down and two forces up. Now there's no left and right here. So if in equilibrium, the forces up equal the forces down. But since we have two unknowns, we can't solve for those forces. So up we have FA plus FB, and down we have FG of the person plus FG of the beam, both of which are 650 Newtons. And so we have FA plus FB is 1300 Newtons. So that's equation one, and we can't do anything with that right now because we don't know A or B. So we'll call that number one. But we can do torques now. So torques, clockwise torques equal counterclockwise torques. Okay, so now we have to choose where we're gonna take our torques about. We, we've got, well, we have an infinite number of choices here. We could go about the left end. We could go about wall A. We could go about the person. We could about, go about the center of the beam. We could go about wall B. We could go about the right end, or you can choose any point you want. But once you choose it, you have to stick with it. It's always a good idea to choose it on top of a force that you don't know, then you don't have to bother to calculate the force. So how about we put it on, on where wall A hits the beam? And now that would mean doing a bunch of calculations for how far away all these things are. Um, maybe it's easier to do it about the left end since we have all these distances about the left end. Um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. So, but it is very, very likely and typical that you put it on top of a force you don't know. So let's put it here. Let's put this our axis of rotation. 
And then we'll just have an equation that has FB in it and the other ones we know. Okay, now if we're gonna do that, we need all the distances. So let's draw it again. You can never draw this too many times. And let's get all the distances. Now we're gonna put our axis here on top of FA so we don't care where that is. It's where everything else is relative to that. So we've got the person, FG person. And we've got the weight of the beam, FG beam. And we've got the force from the other wall. Now we need to know how far away all those things are from O. So from here to here, if you look at the diagram, um, that'd be two meters. You can confirm this. From O to the center of the beam would be 10 minus three. So that would be seven. From here to here should be seven because it's 10 out to here and three to the at seven. So this distance here would be seven. And then from O over to FB, how far would that be? Okay, FB is 15 from the left end minus three, that'd be 12. And you better confirm all those for me. Okay, so we've got lever arms, we've got forces, everything's perpendicular. We don't need any sines or cosines. And the two weights down here, these would both be clockwise torques because they're both trying to pull that beam clockwise. And then this one would be our counterclockwise. Okay, so lever arm times force, lever arm times force, lever arm times force, those are torques. So let's start with the clockwise, counterclockwise, 12 meters times FB must equal two meters times FG person plus seven meters times FG beam, which we know then FB would be two times 650 Newtons plus seven times 650 Newtons divided by 12. And that would give FB of 490 Newtons. I think I'm just gonna double check that. Yep, that works. Okay. And then now we may as well go back to equation one where FA plus FB was 1300. So FA must be 1300 minus FB. So 1300 minus 490 gives us hmm, uh, 810. So those are the two forces in the beam. That's question one. Okay, question two. Now we have some angles to deal with and we have a wall to deal with and hinges to deal with. Okay, so let's draw this again and put the forces on. So we have the force from the sign, which we're told is 215 Newtons. The beam has a weight. And so we have FG beam here. And we're told the weight of the beam is 155 Newtons. And we know the angle at which the cable acts is 35 degrees. Okay, so the cable is gonna have a force of tension along the cable. Now this hinge, obviously the hinge there's gonna be a horizontal force to the right because the only other horizontal force is from the force of tension and that's left. So this has to be to the right, but you don't know whether the, the vertical force here at the hinge is up or down. So you just take a guess. If it's wrong, your number will turn out negative and that's fine. You just know you put the direction wrong. So I'll just take a wild guess that the force at the hinge is up. Okay, so those are all the forces. And the ones we're trying to find are FT, FX, and FY. So 
immediately I'm going to break FT into components. Oh, and of course we have the distances, but we'll put the distances in in a minute. So let's do our up, down, left, right first, because it doesn't matter where these are, it's just up, down, left, right. So this is FT sine 35 from the tension. And then this one would be FT cos 35. And then you've got the 215 from the sine. You've got the 155 from the beam. And you've got an Fx from the hinge and an Fy from the hinge. Okay, so that's the up, down, left, right situation. Notice how I haven't drawn the FT at an angle anymore because I've replaced it with its two components. So we have up equals down. So Fy plus FT sine 35 must equal 155 plus 215. which is 370. Okay, that's equation one. We don't know Fy, we don't know Ft, we can't do anything with that. Equation two, right equals left. Okay, to the right we have Fx, to the left we have Ft cos 35. Number two, can't do anything with that because we don't know either of those. Okay, so torx is what's going to allow you to actually calculate Ft. So torx clockwise equals counterclockwise. Now we need distances. And we're going to put our axis on the hinge because there's two forces there that we don't know, so we would definitely want to put our axis here. This will be our axis of rotation. You could put it anywhere you want, but this is the best choice. That immediately gets rid of any torque from Fx or Fy. Okay, now the only thing doing torque, if we're going to go along the beam for our lever arm, are the vertical components. So we've got Ft sine 35. Ft cos 35 does not exert torque about this axis for rotation because there is no perpendicular distance away. And then we've got the sine of 215. Now we're going to need distances here. Uh, this distance is 1.7 meters. So there's the lever arm for the sign. The tension in the rope acts a distance of 1.35 meters from the hinge. And the weight of the beam itself is halfway along. So that would be half of 1.7. Oh, yep, 1.7 over two. 7 divided by 2, which would be 0 0.065, but we'll do that later. Okay, meters. So clockwise equals counterclockwise again. Clockwise are the weight of the beam, the 155. That's a clockwise. So I'm going to mark that clockwise. And this is a clockwise. Tension is a counterclockwise. So lever arm times force, lever arm times force. Lever arm times force. There's our counterclockwise equals lever arm 1.7 over 2 times force. Those are meters times 155 plus lever arm 1.7 times 215 newtons. Okay, you run through that calculation, you get that the force of tension is 642 newtons. Okay, now we can start going backwards. If we know Ft, we can immediately go back to equation two up here, this one, and we can get Fx. So from number two, Fx equals Ft cos 35 which leads to an Fx of 526 newtons. And then go back to number one, where we had up equals down. So we had Fy plus 
f t sine 35 was equal to uh, 215 plus 155 was 370. Okay, and we have ft now, 642. So you put that in there, 642. And then you get that fy is only just barely positive, two noons. So it is up. So it does point up. If that had come out to a negative number, it would have pointed down. And hinges, depending on what you load up the beam with, the hinge may have to keep it from falling up or falling down. Okay, so that's good for this video.